joining us. Hi, how are you? I'm John Solo. You are not. Welcome to uh, John Solo's Beer Brigade, where all you need is love and fucking books and stuff. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> what I want to do is explain something. This is a little uh, PSA. I don't know what that means, but that's what this is. At the end of every video, we have this little bit that we do, right? <clears throat> There's like a little... Right? And like we clang our bracelet against the, the stand. And then there's a loud beeping sound. <clears throat> now, this beeping sound is not meant for dogs. It's not meant for anything like that. It's a joke. It's a gag. It used to happen in the 80s because that's when I was a kid in the 80s. It would happen at the end, like you know, midnight when you're supposed to go to bed and your parents knew. So your parents would know. They would know. That little Johnny, he's up there, he's watching the TV. And then he'd go up and they'd bust you. But you had to turn it off at that point because you didn't want your parents to hear that sound. Now, what I want to do is I want to explain to my friends in the crowd, <coughs> Alyssa Grambling, I explained it. You don't have to listen all the way through that sound. All you have to do is you just have to take the headphones off your ears. Listen, take them off, take them off. Take them just like that. You can even, you don't have to, you don't even have to like take them all the way. You can just take them away from your ears just a little bit and you don't have to listen to that sound. Yes, Lisa, I got your message. I love you. <laughs> Did you get so, it? <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at that. Who gave her control of that microphone? We are, uh, we're working on a, uh, a little book called Meet Me at Midnight. This is from Lynn Van Dorn. Now, Lynn is a, uh, very quickly, uh, really, like within seven or eight thousand words, becoming one of my favorite authors. She's fucking hilarious. I'm really enjoying this a lot. We are halfway through the story, so if you don't want any spoilers, I mean, it's 14K. What spoilers can there be? They're, they're about to fuck, all right? They're about to fuck. So if you want to hear the fucking, you, you take, hey, Lisa, take the headphones and put them back onto your ears. That way you can hear this. Part. You're going to want to hear this part of it. I promise no beeping is involved in this. I'll warn you before the end of it, okay? I think she just found, is there, is that appropriate? I don't think that girls should be making that. Can, should there be little emojis with the finger like that? Like that? <laughs> wow. All right, here we go. Chapter 8. Adrian is, and is in, trouble. Adrian was more than a little discombobulated. He was in a shower, naked, with Beckham Farmington the fucking third. It was beyond weird and firmly into the land of surreal. Beck stood under the hot spray, his eyes tracking up and down Adrian's body as if he liked what he saw. Wash me he commanded, handing Adrian a bottle of body wash. Adrian a bottle of body wash. Adrian took the soap and stared back at Beck. He'd studied Beck's body from his hiding spot in the linen closet numerous times, but he'd never gotten to be this close. I'm waiting, Beck said, and this house does not have infinite hot water. Come on and get me clean. Adrian's hands shook a little as he tried to open the bottle and pour soap into his hand. He nearly dropped the bottle altogether. With fear, trepidation, and wonder, Adrian brought his soapy palm to Beck's sculpted chest and began to rub. I think I'm dead. We're dying because there's no way this is happening in real life, Adrian thought. Down on your knees. Beck's voice was low and husky. Adrian's eyes flew to Beck's. He arched his eyebrows, but said nothing. He wasn't sure he was capable of making a coherent sound. His world had shrunk to the feeling of slick, wet skin over hard muscle. Make sure that area is really clean. Feeling of slick, wet skin over hard muscle. 
make sure that area is really clean. Beck clarified, up to your exacting standards. That made Adrian snort, but he did sink to his knees. He squirted more soap into his hand than lathered Beck's hairy thighs, strong calves, and over large feet. Such a fucking tease, aren't you? Beck said with a groan of frustration. Such a little. I mean, we don't know. We haven't seen that yet. Beck's hairy thighs, strong calves, and over large feet. Such a little fucking tease, aren't you? Beck said with a groan of frustration. Yeah, Adrian agreed. The statement wasn't wrong. He'd been teasing and taunting Jock since he'd hit puberty. It didn't always go well for him, but it was one of his favorite activities nonetheless. Of course you are. Wash my cock so I can fuck your face. Holy shit. That was more than a bit beyond what Adrian had ever, in his wildest Stop. fantasies, dreamed of. This, this, this was more than a bit. All right. I can fuck your face. Holy shit. This was more than a bit beyond what Adrian had ever, in his wildest fantasies, dreamed about. Adrian got more soap, then ran his hands over Beck's hard cock, jutting out from dark blonde pubic hair. He jerked Beck's cock teasingly with one hand, and the other cupped Beck's heavy balls. Jesus Christ, kid. Beck moaned. You're killing me here. Good, Adrian said. I'm doing it right. Beck laughed, then started to choke when Adrian's hands snuck back from Beck's balls to his ass. He slid soapy fingers into Beck's crack. Fuck, stop that. To his ass. He slid soapy fingers into Beck's crack. <sighs> Fuck, stop that. Although Beck didn't push Adrian away or pull back from his questing fingers. Need to make sure you're clean, Adrian said. All over. It's important. You even said so. <sighs> You little shit. My ass is off limits. We'll see, Adrian said. Water had rinsed Beck's cock free of soap. Adrian touched the tip of his tongue to it and only tasted clean skin. Soon, he'd taste Beck's cum again, though, and he couldn't wait. After you fuck my face. Oh, he was being daring. So very daring, but Adrian couldn't help himself. Beck wanted him, or wanted to use him, and either way, Adrian was firmly on board with whatever Beck was going to dish out. This little experience would give him enough jack-off material for years. <laughs> After you fuck my face. Oh, he was being daring. So very daring. But Adrian couldn't help himself. Beck wanted him, or wanted to use him, and either way, Adrian was firmly on board with whatever Beck was going to dish out. This little experience would give him enough jack-off material for years. Adrian expected Beck to thrust into his mouth, but he didn't. Adrian looked up to see Beck's eyes glittering down at him. I think you're trouble, Beck said musingly. Then... He did thrust forward right to the back of Adrian's throat. And I don't think I give a shh. The back of Adrian's throat. And I think I don't give a shit. Good, Adrian thought. He closed his eyes and relaxed his throat, giving Beck free reign to use him how he liked. While he took thrust after powerful thrust, he was reminded of the glory hole. He brought up the memory, but altered it. He was kneeling on his side of the wall. Thrust after powerful thrust, <clears throat> he was reminded of the glory hole. He brought up the memory, but altered it. He was kneeling on his side of the wall, but this time, Adrian was naked. Everyone could see him in his massive erection. Both in his fantasy and in real life, Adrian curled his hand around his dick and stroked. He moaned around Beck's cock as he sped up his pace. From his short, jerky movements, Adrian knew Beck was very, very close. 
Adrian held onto Beck's thigh with his left hand while his right stroked and his mouth was thoroughly fucked. He moved his left hand slowly until he was again near Beck's ass crack. He ran fingers wet with only water over Beck's pucker, making him buck harder into Adrian's mouth. Fuck, Beck moaned. Fuck, put it in me, do it, as I come, fuck. The last fuck was shouted as Adrian very carefully pushed past Beck's sphincter with a finger. He didn't go deep, he didn't do much at all. That only lasted a few seconds, but then Beck was coming in Adrian's mouth and groaning his head off. Adrian also came, the water from the shower now cooling, washing it down the drain. Beck shook a little, then folded up until he was also kneeling in the shower. Water's getting cold, he muttered, sounding as fucked out as any man Adrian had ever heard. Adrian leaned forward and turned off the water. We need to dry off and get out of here. Otherwise, we'll freeze. I think they keep the house at like 68 degrees max. Fine, fine. Just give me a moment. I need to figure out where I put my legs. That made Adrian giggle. A silly, girlish sound that Adrian heard her. <laughs> give me a moment. <clears throat> I need to figure out where I put my legs. That made Adrian giggle, a silly girlish sound that Adrian hated. He froze, waiting for a reaction from Beck, but he seemed way too blissed out to be paying attention. Good. Adrian sat on the here. He seemed way too blissed out to be paying attention. Good. Adrian sat back on his heels and shivered a little. What now? he asked. I locate my legs, we dry off, and then we crawl into my bed. We stay there for the afternoon. I do things to you. He shivered again, but this time not with cold. But I have chores left to do. Fuck that. Beck stood, then offered Adrian a hand. I'm your chore now. Adrian wondered if that was for the rest of the day, or longer. He tried not to hope. Okay, he said. I guess you're better than scrubbing toilets. And that would be chapter eight. And, Len, I love you. This is fucking hilarious. It's really well done. Thank you for letting me work on it. All right. <clears throat> I need to make a just a, another little brief public announcement here. Um, Lissa, I'm going to be hitting the outro button soon. There's going to be some music that plays. And after the music plays, what you want to do is you want to pull your earphones off a little bit. Just, just a little bit away from your ears. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you, you don't have the benefit of hearing that loud high pitch sound it's only for streamers um so anyways i love you to death have fun y'all i will see you on the next round good luck peace out merry christmas happy hanukkah and raspberry jam and shit mm -hmm. you know that always works better if i hit the right button to like close the show out when i do all those jokes there